Hello. On behalf of Alpha Omega team, today I would like to talk about one of the criterion of element quality, and that is aspect ratio. Today we are going to talk about the definition of aspect ratio, how to calculate it, and what is the acceptable limit. First, let's go ahead and talk about the definition of aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is the element's deviation from having all sides of equal length. A high aspect ratio occurs bad shape, meaning long and thin elements. Now, let's go ahead and have a perfect triad. A perfect triad is a triangle that has all sides of equal length, and the angle between each edge is 60 degree. And having a perfect quad means all sides having equal length, and all sides are also perpendicular with respect to each other. Now, having a triad that doesn't have a good aspect ratio is shown here, same as for, same as for the quad. It means that the edges are not proportional with respect to each other. So if I go ahead and calculate the aspect ratio for the perfect triad and the perfect quad, it is going to be 1. And calculating, in this case, the aspect ratio for these bad elements is going to be 20. Now, how do we calculate aspect ratio? Let's go ahead and have a triad element and name each node, i, j, and k. A preliminary aspect ratio, which we are showing it here by ASP, or AT, is calculated by averaging the three values of AM, then taking the square root. So if we want to show it mathematically, it's going to be by, it's going to be AMI plus AMJ plus AMK over by three, and the root of square of that will give us the preliminary aspect ratio. For the benefit of computational efficiency, the aspect ratio of a triangle is computed based on the angle measures at the corner nodes rather than the height and the width of the triangle. For the calculation, mid side nodes are ignored and the triangle is treated as connecting nodes I, J, and K with the straight lines. So, for the angle theta at node I, a quantity AMI is calculated as follows. If the theta is between 0 and 60 degree, the AMI can be measured by 0.5 over 1 minus cosine theta. And if the theta is between 60 and 180 degree, is going to be equal, AMI is going to be equal 1.5 over 1 plus cosine of theta. The quantity AMI is 1 when theta is 60 degree. As theta deviates from 60 in either direction, AMI increases to a maximum of infinity, and as theta near 0 or 180 de degree. So, we have another value which is called modifying aspect ratio, which is the aspect ratio is modified to produce a distribution of values similar to those that would be produced if the aspect ratio were calculated directly from the height and width. And that is aspect ratio minus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 1 is going to give us this modified aspect ratio. Now, how do we calculate the aspect ratio for a quad element? Let's go ahead and have a perfect shape quad element and name each node A, B, C, and D counterclockwise. I'm going to go ahead and push node D to the right side to deviate this quad from being a perfect shape. Here I have the deviated quad element. I'm going to go ahead and select the mid node of each edge. Now, I'm going to go ahead and connect node, the orange color nodes together. And I'm going to name them F and H for the orange color nodes and E and G for the purple nodes. Let's go ahead and name this line. I'm going to name it L1. Now, if I go ahead 
and, and draw a parallel line, a parallel to L1 that is going through G and E, and another set of lines that are going through F and H, then I'm going to have a rectangle here. If I do the same process for by, by connecting other nodes together, meaning connecting node E and G together and having two parallel lines that is going through H and F and two other lines that are perpendicular to these two lines that are going through E and G, then I can form another rectangle. So how can I calculate the aspect ratio of this quad element? Let's go ahead and see these steps. Step number one, from the quadrilateral A, B, C, and D, join the midpoints of opposite sides. These lines form the axis line L1 that forms rectangle 1. And as you can see, rectangle 1 is represented by green color, and rectangle 2 is represented by purple color. Fixing L1 as axis. Draw parallel lines to L1 at midpoints of the other opposite sides at E and G. Draw perpendicular lines to L1 at F and H. Now, find the ratio between the max side to mean side of the rectangle 1 formed using L1. And procedure is illustrated in this picture. So, if I find the max side and mean side and have that ratio and compare the same ratio with the another rectangle that I created in the second process for the purple rectangle, then the maximum of either of these ratio is going to give me the aspect ratio for this quad element. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some important points. Point number one, if the element is not flat, the nodes are projected onto a plane passing through the average of the corner locations and perpendicular to the average of the corner normals. The remaining steps are performed on these projected locations. Meaning that if, a, if an element is not flat, means that the warping angle and the warping factor is not zero. So we need to go ahead and find the average of the corner locations and perpendicular to the average of the corner normals and then apply the same step that we talked about in previous slide and find the aspect ratio. Number two, rectangles are constructed centered about each of the two lines with edges passing through the element edge midpoints. The aspect ratio of the quadrilateral is the ratio of a longer side to a shorter side of whichever rectangle is most stretched. And number three, the best possible quadrilateral aspect ratio for a square is one. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at ANSYS help and see what ANSYS is offering for, ANS for aspect ratio. So ANSYS is saying, if the aspect ratio of an element is 20, I'm going to give you a warning. And if it is more than 10 powered by 6, I'm going to give you an error. Now, what is the recommended aspect ratio? Here, I have an element with aspect ratio 20. Here, there is another element with aspect ratio 10. And here is another element with aspect ratio 7. As I said, in other videos of element quality, it really depends on your problem. Aspect ratio acceptance limit or the rule of thumb number is going to be different in fluid mechanics and structural analysis. Here, based on experience and as a rule of thumb, I'm going to recommend aspect ratio 10. Of course, we try to avoid having more and higher aspect ratio than 10 in the areas of interest. Having higher than 10 is going to make us face some challenges. 
and those challenges will be inaccurate result or maybe in some cases the solution will not even go through. Thank you very much for paying attention to this video. Thanks for watching our video and hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.